I'm going to apply a theory of services in the field of supply chain to illustrate the role of capabilities. And I'll just start by reminding you of the definition of capability that we are working with. So we start with dispositions in BFO. Some dispositions are what we might call good dispositions. For example, the disposition of a speaker of a language to speak that language. Those we call capabilities. And we define capabilities more precisely as dispositions in whose realization some person or group of persons has an interest. So that will be the background of what I say now, which is about supply chain. So there is a familiar distinction, I'm sure you're all familiar with it more than me, between goods and services. The problem is to define services, and they are sometimes said to be uh, occurrence, which um, are provided because they have economic value. Um, I'm going to argue that this is uh, not sufficient to do justice to what is involved in the service realm. So specifically, I want to argue that in many cases, services are services because they give rise to patterns, which are complex qualities or complex dispositions in material entities. And you can't buy and sell patterns in the way in which you can buy and sell trucks or cranes or parcels of meat. All right, so we talk about hairdressing services. The hairdresser creates a new pattern on your head and the teacher creates a new pattern in your brain. And um, so in BFO, capabilities fall under realizable entities. Material Patterns fall briefly under qualities and then we have material goods and then we have processes some of which are services. <coughs> so we're interested in those cases where patterns are created as a result of the provision of service. So these are economically relevant patterns. And um, they, they ground a disposition in some entity, for instance, a customer or a, a client or an employer. And those dispositions are called capabilities. So the example at the heart of much of this will be training. Training is a service, teaching is a service. This provision, provision of this uh, PowerPoint deck is a service because it gives rise to capabilities on the part of the people who hear it, if we're lucky. So capabilities are realized in processes and um, the capability which is realized in a service in very many cases, perhaps in all cases, has output some economically relevant pattern. Now, in the supply chain case, this pattern will be, for example, a pattern of adjacency between a truck and a loading bay. All right, now, but where services create patterns, we need more services to protect those patterns or repair or restore those patterns. And um, we also need infrastructure. So the supply chain has lots of physical infrastructure. That is not my topic here. I'm just mentioning it for completeness. So we have pattern-related services which create patterns, protect patterns, repair and restore patterns. In medicine, we have cosmetic, cosmetic medicine, which gives you a new uh, lip pattern. We have preventive medicine and we have restorative medicine and similarly in services so we have pattern creating services all transport services are pattern creating they create adjacency chains roughly speaking there's a lot more to transport than this but all of it fits within this uh, view i believe and now selling services create similar patterns of adjacency between sellers and buyers so the production life cycle for goods always involves accompanying provision of services of buying and selling. And so what these do is switch patterns of ownership. So now person one has money and person two has a good. The service provider, who may be person one, 
switches this pattern so now person one has good and person two has money. So these are spatio legal patterns. They involve both spatial adjacency and ownership rights. And of course, they become very complicated when we have brokers and other uh, parties supplying services to assist in the uh, realization of selling processes. Then there are pattern protecting services by uh, warehouse guards and police and so forth. And also tracing and auditing services, which serve to protect the supply chain where it's important that it's not interfering with in the case of healthcare services. And then we have pattern maintenance services where we repair supply chain infrastructure, for instance. And insurance is also a pattern restoring, repairing, maintenance service, which is a very complicated set of services at each stage in the adjacency chain. And insurance, insurance is there in order to enable the restoring of a supply chain. So we have three kinds of services, pattern creating, pattern protecting, pattern restoring, and that's the end.